Amen. Isang mapagpalang araw sa ating lahat. Sa oras na ito, atin ang mag-upisahan ng ating gawain sa araw na ito. Tayo pong lahat ay uh, mag-ready na sa glory ng Lord sa message niya na i-deliver sa ating sa oras na ito. Kaya naman tayo lahat ay tumayo mag-worship, mag-alay ng papurit pagsamba sa ating Diyos na buhay.
Jesus sa sarili. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa mga ito, Panginoon. God, Lord, maraming salamat, Panginoon, at hindi pa mo naman kami, Panginoon, upang magpuri, magsamba sa iyo sa ating at ang Panginoon. Lord, amin eh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ang mula pa po, Panginoon, ang mga kapatid na namin, Panginoon, sa araw natin, Panginoon, Lord, ibuhin mo kayo ng Panginoon, Panginoon, upang sila, Panginoon, makadalo sa araw natin, Panginoon. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, ikaw na po, Panginoon, muna, Panginoon, sa gamitin mo sa araw natin, Panginoon, at hindi, Panginoon, ang iyong balita, Panginoon, sa amin, Panginoon, God. Lord, buksan mo na namin puso, Panginoon, buksan mo na namin kaisipan, Panginoon, o pa, ibaba mo sa amin, sa amin, Panginoon, Lord, itatakangan sa amin po sa isipan, Panginoon, upang ibabahagi din namin, Panginoon, sa ibang bad word. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. 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 Patuloy po natin purihin at sabahin ang ating Diyos na buhay. Amen. Let us declare. Thank you.
Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. And we will continue to worship you and to exalt your name in this place, O oh God, Jesus.
tayo po ay uh, mga po po sa presensya ng Panginoon. Isa po pinagpala ng linggo sa ating lahat. Wala din po sa lugar ng Pilipinas hanggat sa iba't ibang dako ng daigig. Tayo po na nag-aabang sa ating live stream. Tayo po ay muli magkakaroon ng pagkakataong purihin, sambahin, luwalatihin para ngala ng ating Panginoon. You will have another privilege to worship, bless the holy name of our God, and lift up His holy name because He deserves it. Amen? Amen. So, praise God. We come to you once again in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us turn our Bibles in the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. I think so Zechariah is one of the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. It is called minor because of the length of the work that he has done. So the length of the writings that he has done. That's why it's called minor. But in terms of the calling, it is the same as other prophets, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, but they are called the minor prophets because they have written shorter messages. Okay, so Zechariah is the author of the book of Zechariah in the Old Testament. And the main theme or concern or message of the book of Zechariah is about rebuilding the temple, the second temple after their exile from Babylon under the leadership of Zerubbabel and Haggai. So, sabi ko nga po, ang uh, aklat ng Sekaraya ay uh, patungkol sa pagtatayo muli ng ikalawang templo. Yung contemporary po ni Zekaraya si uh, Prophet Haggai, also one of the minor prophets. So, because they did the rebuilding of the second temple of the people of Israel or the Jews. Sabi po ni Zechariah sa Zechariah 4.6 okay. Zechariah 4.6 It is not by mind nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord. Amen. Alam na alam po natin yan because you know, we sing that song. It's not by mind nor my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Because ultimately, God is wanting us to realize that in everything that we do, sa lahat ng bagay sa ating mga buhay, it is not by our own might. It is not by, by our own strength. It is not by, by our own ability, nor by our own power, that we will achieve success, that we will be able to uh, do what God is wanting us to do. But it is only by the power of the Spirit of God. Amen, Muba? Amen. Amen. So, uh, okay, let's turn our Bibles then. Let's start from verse 1 of chapter 12. Uh, the title of the chapter is Jerusalem's Enemies to be Destroyed. Okay, yung mga kaaway daw ng mga taga-Jerusalem or ng Israel ay mawawasa. And let me start from verse 1. A prophecy. The word of the Lord concerning Israel the word of the Lord. Whose word? Kanino pong salita? Sa Lord. Sa Lord. Importante yun. That is very important, significant. It is very relevant. The word of the Lord. Because there are so many words. There are so many hearsays. There are so many messages coming from anybody. Coming from anywhere. Napakarami pong mga salita ngayon. Napakarami pong mga nagsasabi ngayon uh, ang mga mensahe nila ay galing sa Diyos. Pero dito po sa book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 1, it is a prophecy, a prophetic word coming 
from the Lord Himself. Amen? Napakahalaga po nun. Coming from the Lord Himself. Sabi po doon, the word of the Lord the concerning Israel. So it is God Himself who is speaking. And it is a revelation. Sabihin mo natin na revelation. Revelation is very important. Napaka-importante po. Napakahalaga po ng revelation. What does revelation mean? It is the unveiling of something. It is an act of revealing or communicating something especially that is of divine truth. Amen? So, sa buhay po natin, Kapag tayo po ay may revelation, it makes a difference in the world. Kapag tayo po ay may pinangahawakan na kapahayagan mula sa Diyos, if we have a revelation from God, everything changes. Nagbabago po ang lahat. So when you go through some difficulties, when you go through some battles, pag mayroon kang pinagdadaanan, mabigat, mahirap, masakit, Pag meron kang pinagdadaanan bigat na laban, if you have a revelation, it will sustain you. It will not make you give up because you have a revelation. So a revelation makes the difference in the world. Ano po ba ang pinakamabisang weapon natin against Satan? Marahil masabi nyo, oh, nasa Ephesians chapter 6, kasi nandoon yung weapons of warfare natin. You know? Shield of faith. The, the, the word of truth. Yung mga, as yung sandalias na kung saan mag, mag-preach ka ng gospel. Kompleto yun. Lahat po yun ay tama at mabuti. But I believe that the most important weapon, the most significant and powerful weapon that we can have against the enemy, against the attack of Satan, praise God for faith, praise God for the word of God, praise God for prayer. But I tell you, beloved, all of these things are good, but if you do not have a revelation of God in your life, madali kang matutumba. Madali kang magigive up. You will easily give up if you don't have a revelation to walk on. If you have a re- if you don't have a revelation to cling on. So the revelation of God is your most powerful weapon against the darts of the enemy. What are the darts of the enemy? Your thoughts, your beliefs, your yung, yung, yung mga iniisip mo na nilalagay ng, ng kaaway. So if the devil will lie you if the devil will put doubts and belief, lies and deception in your mind and you entertain it, pinapasok mo at in-entertain mo at wala kang revelation, madali ka niyang mauuha, madali ka niyang mapapabagsak, madali ka niyang maluloko, madali ka niyang mananansi. But if you have a revelation, whatever the devil tries to put in your mind, to lie to you, to deceive you, to make you give up, to make you doubt God and His promises and His word, you will give up. You will fall. Amen? Ikaw ay mawawala sa tawag mo. But if you have a revelation that thus saith the Lord, this is the word of the Lord, no devil in hell and demons in hell can stop you because you have the revelation. Kaya doon pa sa verse 1, it is very important, sabi po doon, the word of the Lord. It is not just anybody's word. It, it is not even Zechariah's word. But it is the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It changes you. Binabago ka nito. Ang naisipan mo. Nagkakaroon ka ng Nang, nang unveiling, you know, your revelation is the unveiling of something in your life. And so when that lambo is unveiled in your life, you become a different person. Amen? Nagbabago ka. Amen? Hindi ka nagiging superhero. But something is different with you. Something is powerful with you. 
that no darts of the enemy can prevail against you. Why? Because of the revelation. Sabihin mo natin that revelation. Revelation. It is the same revelation that sustained Apostle Paul. Sa 2 Corinthians chapter 12, sabi po ni Apostle Paul, ay uh, binigyan siya ng mga kapahayagan, hindi maliri. He was given revelations and visions. And these revelations and visions were so great, amen, that a thorn in the flesh was given unto him. Amen? Para hindi po siya magmalakit, magmayaman, kasi ganun kadakila yung revelation na natanggap niya. Amen? The, the enemy will try to to stop you, but it's just like Paul, against shipwreck, against persecution, against imprisonment, against in front of death itself, <laughs> Paul never stop. Hindi po siya tumigil. Hindi siya napatigil. He was never stopped. Why? Because 2 Corinthians 12 in the life of Paul is real. He had um, you know, a, a large amount of revelation and visions in his life. Kaya kahit na ano pang naging hadlang sa buhay niya, napagtagumpayan niya. Why? Because he had revelations and vision. Kaya po tayo, you, we don't have to be, you know, have a title. Hindi mo kailangan maging apostol, propeta, guru, pastor, at evangelista para magkaroon ng revelation. As long as you are a child of God and you are seeking God in your life, you can have a revelation. And this revelation will be your guiding light, will be your shining light, will be your anchor, will be your lighthouse. Diba? Ang lighthouse po, ang purpose niya para hindi maligaw yung mga yung mga sasakyang pandagat sa kanilang paglalakbay yun ang kanilang nagiging diya. Ganon din sa ating mga buhay. Tayo po yung mga kristyanong tinawag ng Panginoon. At sa ating paglalakbay, hindi madali. Marami tayong pinagdadaanan. We are going through a lot of battles, tribulations, trials, pagsubok, problema. Pero kung tayo po may kapahayagan, the word of the Lord, Amen? We will never be able to be defeated. Tayo po ay magtatanong pa. At magarating natin yung ating pumuntahan. Because that revelation is your lighthouse. That revelation is your guide. That revelation is your, you know, guiding light towards your path, towards your journey, so that you will be able to say, I will fulfill my destiny. I will be able to finish my Monday. Amen? Amen. So, revelation. So, sa verse 1 of Zechariah, the word of the Lord. It is the word of the Lord itself. Concerning what? Concerning Israel. So, pag-aaralan po natin ngayon yung kapahayagan ng Diyos sa Israel, which is, you know, dito po tinapat sa Zechariah chapter 12. Eh, bakit po Israel? Anong kinalaman nun sa akin? Malaki ang kinalaman ng Israel sa akin. Amen? Malaki po ang kinalaman ng Israel. Israel is... Uh, Israel is one of uh, Israel is God's people. Israel is the nation of God. And whatever the Lord is doing to Israel, it concerns us. Amen. Because we are connected to them through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, on when he became man, he sacrificed himself on the cross. He came from the nation of Israel. He was a Jew by nationality. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he hung himself on the cross, we had that opportunity and access towards salvation. Kaya tayo po ay uh, nagkaroon ng, uh, ng, ng karapatan. Amen? The spirit of adoption, we were adopted into, the, into God's uh, people, into God's nation, into God's family. So, tingnan po natin, ano po ba yung... Uh, Word of the Lord na ito patungkol po sa Israel. Okay. So, Zechariah 12, 1b, tuloy natin. The Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms the human spirit within a person. Okay? Pagkatapos po sabihin na this is the word of the Lord, sabi po, dinescribe po kung sino yung Lord na yun. 
na nagbibigay ng revelation, na nagbibigay ng kapayaran. Who is He? Who is this Lord? Who is this Lord from which the word of the Lord is coming from? Okay, number one, He stretches out the heavens. Siya ang naglagak ng kalangitan. Hallelujah. Number two, He lays the foundation of the earth. And number three, He forms the human spirit. Ito po yung creative power ng Diyos. Create niya ang kalangitan. Sino makaka-create ng kalangitan? It should be somebody who is powerful, omnipotent. Wala pong makakapag-claim na silang nag-create ng kalangitan. It is only the Lord Himself. And for that alone, you can trust God. Amen. O pagkakatiwalaan mo siya. Kasi meron nga siya kakayanan eh, na maglagat ng kalangitan. At meron siya kakayanan maglagay ng kundasyon ng, ng buong sangkalupaan. He has laid the foundations of the earth. And number three, He forms the human spirit. He created you and me. Amen? So kung meron man, meron pakialam sa buhay natin, siya na lumalang sa atin. If there is somebody who is very concerned with us, it is He who created us. Just like this watch. Kapag na, nasira itong relong ito, saan ko ito dadalhin? Dadalhin ko po go ito sa bakery? Para ipaayos sa, sa baker? Hindi, di ba? Kaya saan ko ito ipapaayos? sa pagawaan ng relo. Sa pagawaan ng relo. Sa gumagawa ng relo. Sa pagkat siya may kakayanan ng relo si Nino. Sa pagkat siya yung gumawa nito. In the same manner that we have been created by God. And so if there is something wrong with this created being, siya lang may kakayanan ayusin nito. That's why we can trust Him. His power. His ability. Amen? We can trust Him because He has stretched out the heavens. He has laid the foundation and He has formed you and me with, from a human spirit. Tayo po ay nilalang niya. Kaya naman meron siyang kakayanan, meron siyang authority, at meron siyang kapangyarihan para ang lahat ng bagay sa buhay natin ay ayusin, isustain, at patuloy na tulungan tayong matapos ang tawag natin sa ating mga buhay. Amen? So, when God is able to lay the foundations of the earth, when God is able to lay uh, the, 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 the heavens, and God is able to form you, you know, create you and me, how can you not trust His power? Siya lang ang makakagawa nun. Kaya mo ba siyang pagkawalaan? When the going gets tough, and the tough gets going in your life, can you trust Him? Why not? Because... He has the power. He had the power to lay the foundations of the earth. He had the power to spread the skies. He had the power to create you and me. He had that power. Amen? Meron ka pangyarihan ng Diyos. So kapag meron po tayong pinagdadaan ng mabigat, mapagkakatiwalaan ba, siya na nagsabing, ito ang sabi ng Panginoon. Can you trust it? Yes, you can. Amen? Okay. Has God made you a promise? Na, na meron ka bang uh, pinangahawakang pangako ang Diyos? Amen. Na pangahawakan mo pa rin ba hanggang ngayon? Amen. Or there are times when you are already doubting. There are times when you are already, you know, being spent. There are times when you are already wavering and tired of waiting. Amen? Minsan sa buhay natin kapag sobra-sobra na inaranasan natin, Amen. We, we give up on our vision. We give up on our revelation. We give up on our mandate. We give up on our dream. We give up on our calling. Because we say we have grown tired. Because we say we have, you know, we, we, we have waited for so long. And as if we, we cannot, you know, we cannot believe anymore. Amen. But God who laid the skies and the foundations of the earth and created you and me is trustworthy and powerful that he who promised is able to do what he has promised. Amen? Yeah. Kaya niyang to pa rin yung binigay niya sa iyong pangako. Kaya niyang to pa rin yung sinabi niya sa iyo. Kaya niyang par- paratilihin ang, ang, ang buhay mo hanggang sa iyong uh, hanggang matapos mo ang mandate mo. Kaya niyang tapusin ito. Amen? Yeah. Sapagkat 
siya ay hindi sinungaling. Numbers 23.19 God is not a man that He should lie. When He promises something, He will do it. Amen? Amen. At ano po yung promise na yun? Concerning Jerusalem, ituloy natin sa Zechariah 12.2 I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding people really Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. Okay? So, balikan po natin. In the context of the nation of Jerusalem, sabi po ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Zechariah, gagawin po ang Jerusalem na isang popa ng trembling, ng uh, really, really means staggering. Para pa lang pag ikaw ay, sa ibang version is, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness. Pag ikaw ay lasing, susuray-suray ka. Wala kang, wala kang sense of balance, babagsak ka. Ganon daw po gagawin ng Diyos ang Jerusalem. Magiging sanhi ito ng pagkasuray-suray ng mga tao sa paligid niya. Gagawin daw niya ang Jerusalem as a source of reeling, trembling, staggering. Para pag ikaw ay nasuntok ng isang malakas at pagkatapos ng nagroge ka, hindi ka makapag-lakad makapag, uh, uh, ng matino at diretso. Ganun daw pang Israel, ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa Jerusalem. He will make it a source, a, a cup of drunkenness that people around it will drink from Jerusalem. And instead of, you know, being satisfied with the wine that they will drink from it, they will stubborn. They will be drunk. And sila po ay magiging, uh, they will not be able to walk straight. Amen. So, nanonood po ba kayo ng mga balita at aware po ba kayo noong mga nakaraan kung paano ang Jerusalem ay ginera, kung paano ang Israel ay inatake ng mga kalaban niya. We are seeing the beginning of the end. Amen. Whatever happens to Jerusalem is the barometer of our timeline sa pag, pag, uh, pagdating ng Panginoong Yeso Cristo. Kaya kapag may nangyari sa Jerusalem, maging interesado kayo, alamin nyo, sapagkat in the last days, Jerusalem will become the center of uh, political, economic, and uh, lahat po ng, ng, ng mga kaganapan, magiging sentro ang Jerusalem. Kaya po yung nangyayari na napakaliit na bansa, napakaliit na bansa but you know, it warrants worldwide attention in terms of media, di ba? Eh, tayo rin naman, meron din naman tayo mga problema, di ba, sa Western Agency, pero hindi ganun yung coverage, but when it comes to Israel, you know, it's a worldwide coverage, and isa lang po, nagkakaroon po ng hatred towards Israel, nagkakaroon po ng hatred towards God's people, at sila po ay pinagkakaisahan Sila yung inaatake, pero sila yung lumalabas na magpromise Because, you know, we are just defending ourselves, sabi nila. Pero, hindi ganun ang tingin ng mga tao. Ang tingin ng mga tao, sila ang nang-oppress. Sila ang, sila ang nang-aatake, sila ang pumapatay. Kasi kung titingnan mo, disproportionate. Sa kanila, 12 lang ang namatay. Kung sa kanila, 200 plus ang namatay. Kasalanan nila, kasi mas konti sila eh, na namatay. Doon, mas marami na matay. Para ba, ilan bang kudyo ang kailangan mamatay? Para matanggap nyo. Amen? Na sila ay dinidefend lang nila ang kanilang salari. How many Jews do, do, does it have, you know, do, does it have to, you know, die para matanggap, maging katanggap-tanggap yung kanilang self-defense. Amen? So, anyway, so, the, the Bible is actually saying in Zechariah 12.2 that He will make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding people screaming or trembling. Ano po sa Tagalog? Meron po yung Tagalog na Bible? English din. Tagalog tayo lang. Ano sabi? Same verse yun. Sabi dito, Narito aking gagawin ang Jerusalem na isang tasang panglito. Panglito? Panglito. Panglito. Sa lahat ng bayan sa palibot. Lahat ng bayan sa palibot. At sa Juda, sa Juda man ay magiging gayon sa pagkukub laban sa Diyos sa Bibi. Oh. Inversion kasi ito yung gano'n. Alright. Okay. Panglito. Panglito. Amen. So, sa, sa version ko po is reeling or trembling or staggering. 
you know, as a result of of drunkenness, di ba? Pag lasing ka nga, susuray-suray ka, at hindi ka, oh, hindi, you are out of your mind, at hindi ka magiging matino, in other words. So, magiging ganun daw po ang, ang Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, we can learn from this revelation of God towards Jerusalem. Amen? Kung paano ang Panginoon ay concerned sa Jerusalem, ganun din po concern ang Panginoon sa ating mga buhay. At kung anong pangako ng Panginoon We can make it, you know, a promise of God as well in our lives. At makukuha po natin yung mga katotohanan nito. So, sabi ko nga, bakit kinakailangan natin maging interesado sa Jerusalem or Israel itself? Because Israel is God's people. They are God's chosen people. And as God has been faithful to Israel, God can do so with us. Kung paano naging tapat ang Diyos sa Israel, sa gitna ng kanyang, hindi siya perfectong bansa. It was not a perfect, you know, people. Because, you know, they would always obey God, tapos mag, mag uh, disobey sila. And as a product of the disobedience, they have been scattered throughout the world. Sila po ay uh, pinapangalat sa buong mundo. At yung pagpapangalat nila yun, for 2,000 years, in 70 AD, alam niyo po yung kwento, di ba? Nagsimula po sila kay Abraham. Si Abraham tinawag ng Diyos. Nilabas niya mula sa Uru, sa Mesopotamia. At sabi niya, go and I will lead you into a, into a land flowing with milk and honey. At mula po kay Abraham, nangako po Panginoon sa, sa, sa Genesis 17 and all Genesis 12 hanggang 17, all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Pinangako po ng Diyos yung kay Israel. Binibigyan siya ng isang lumang pangako na saan, kung saan dumadaloy ang milk and honey. At uh, yun po ang, uh, ang kanilang kwento. Pero, along the way, di ba? so from Abraham, siya yung kan- kanilang patriarch, naging isang bansa sila under ni Moses nung hinilabas sila sa Egypt at nagsettle sila sa land of Canaan. At ang Canaan po, yun po, doon po yung lugar na yun kung saan pinag-aawayan nila. Kasi noong nailabas ng mga ng, ng ni Moses ang mga, ang mga Israelita, sila muna ay nag-wonder sa ilang, in 40 days pwede na lang masa, masako yung Canaan, pero ito 40 years bago po nila nasako. At noong nasako nila, they had to eliminate lahat ng mga hidden doon para hindi sila mahaluan. Because God would not want them to be uh, mahaluan ng mga kultura, paniniwala ng kanilang mga kapitbahay. So they had to sweep away. At kailangan nilang tagalin yung mga hidden doon. And it took military campaign ni Joshua, sa buhay ng mga ng mga sumunod kay Moses para masakot nila ang buong kanaan. At pagkatapos noon, nagsettle na sila doon, they were living, you know, in, uh, in prosperity and peace and calm. But then, gusto nilang kumpihan yung mga kapitbahay nila na may hari. And so sila po ay nagkaroon ng hari. Hindi po dapat sila magkaroon ng haring tao kasi meron silang hari na ang Diyos mismo. Pero gusto nilang kopyahin ang pamamaraan ng mundo ng kanilang mga kapitbahay. So pinagbigyan sila, pinigyan sila ng Saul. At mula kay Saul ay si David and every lahat po ay uh, nag-follow na. Amen. So fast forward, si David na-conquer po niya ang Jerusalem. At ang, since in his military conquest, he was able to conquer Jerusalem and Jerusalem became the capital of Israel, the, the capital of, 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 of God's nation. Pero, dumating po ang mga Babylonians. At yung mga Babylonians, sila po ay uh, sila po ay in-scatter, nagkaroon po sila ng exile. Amen. Okay, bumalik ulit ako. So, so nagkaroon po ng exile. Pagkatapos po, na they build yung second temple. At pag build po ng second temple, yung second temple po na yun ay nawasa ulit noong 70 AD under the Romans. Yung mga Roman Empire. Sila po ay uh, winasak nila yung templo. At yung mga Yehudyo, 
pinalayas ng mga Romano. Kaya sila po'y nagpangalan sa buong mundo. For 2,000 years, ganun ang buhay nila. For 2,000 years, the Jews, the Israelites, were scattered to the four corners of the earth. It would have been impossible for them to be gathered again as a people because they were scattered throughout the earth. Nagpangalan sila. At hindi lang sila nagpangalan, they were continued to be persecuted, hounded, even annihilated. In fact, nag-raise si Satan ng mga satanic uh, people to annihilate them. The Germany's uh, Hitler annihilated 6 million Jews. Pinatay niya 6 na million kudyo. An attempt to wipe them out from the face of the earth. But in 1948, how to be impossible? Mula sa pinaka at noong 1948, sila po ay naitatag bilang isang bayan. At sa mapa, sila ay muling naibalik. At ang kanilang lingwahe, which is Hebrew, continues to flourish. Sa ka nakakita, kapag ang isang, ang isang kultura, ang isang uh, kabihasnan, ay nawala, ay hindi mahirap na yung ibalik. Ang mga Babylonians, hindi nakabalik. Ang mga Romans, hindi nakabalik. Yung may lahat ng mga nakasabay ng mga Hudyo ito, ng mga Israelita ito. Those empires, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greek, and the Roman empires, they were all gone. At ang nakasabayan ng mga Israelita, but Israel was reborn on May 1948. Sila po ay naipanganak na muli. Sila po ay nagbumagdagbalikan. Sapagkat meron pong isang Jew na tinulungan po niya, this Jew was able to help the British nation into manufacturing ammunition. Yung kanya pong, uh, he is a chemist, yung kanya pong uh, ammunition ay naging malaking tulong sa World War I sa Great Britain para makonquer niya uh, ang Daiti. So, as a reward, sabi po ni, ng uh, Great Britain, what do you want us to do for you as a favor? Sabi ng Great Britain. Ang sabi po ng Jewish na ito, Please help me establish a nation for my people and let them come back to the promised land. Kaya po sila nagbalikan. Amen, nagbalikan po sila. Ang una ay ilang piraso lang, 35,000. Hanggang sa lahat sila ay nagbalikan sapagkat pinapersecute din po sila sa mga maraming lupa. Lalo titik sa Europe. There is this strong anti-Semitic sentiment sa India. So what am I saying? They have been erased from the earth. They have been scattered because of the diaspora. But out of the impossible, they were reborn as a nation. Kung hindi mo ba naman makita na kamay ng Diyos ang kumikinis. It is only the power of God who would make that possible. Out of the impossible, out of obscurity. Amen? They were persecuted, hounded, annihilated, killed, hated. Even if there is a group of people that is most hated in the world, sila po yung mga Jews. Pero God is saying, dito po sa ating pinag-aralan, sa Zechariah 12.3, On that day, the Lord says, When all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all nations. And all who try to move it, will endure themselves. Sa King James Version, all who try to move Jerusalem will be cut into pieces. Will be cut into pieces. Anybody who tries to touch Jerusalem, anybody who tries to move Jerusalem, the Lord is saying, will be cut into pieces. Will, will endure themselves. Sila na nagtatangka, nasakta ng Jerusalem. Baguhin, i-move ang Jerusalem. Atakihin ang Jerusalem. Ano rin po ang mangyayari sa kanila? Mapapahawak sila. They will endure themselves. Amen? And the, the Lord is saying, all the nations of the earth, Amen? Hindi lamang po ito one nation against nation. Ngayon, Hamas lang ang kalaban nila. May Hezbollah sa north. Amen? Merong ISIS. Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS. Palang ngayon. Pero dito sa Zechariah 3, 
all the nations of the earth will come against Jerusalem. All the nations of the earth will attack Jerusalem. Ito na po yung tinatawag na the battle of Armageddon, the last of the last of the battles that will be fought on earth. At lahat po ng tao, lahat ng bansa sa daigib ay magkakaisa as a massive opposition, an enemy that will overwhelm Jerusalem. Amen? Imagine mo, kung ikaw ay pinagtulong-tulungan, hindi lang isa, kundi lahat ng bansa ng buong daigib at na napakaliit mo. Amen? Paano ka pa? Isang tinis ka lang, di ba? But the Lord is saying, on that day when all the nations of the earth will come against Jerusalem, they will be put to harm. They will endure themselves. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, they will be cut to pieces. Amen? Lahat ka muna nagtatangka. So, when was the last time somebody attacked you? When was the last time somebody or something overwhelmed you? That this magnitude of the opposition, this magnitude of problem, this magnitude of enemy in your life is so great. Amen? That all, lahat, lahat, pinadala ng jablo para ikaw ay uh, digdigin, para ikaw ay bugbugin, para ikaw ay patayin. Amen? When was the last time you experienced that? Hindi ka na makahinga. Kasi kahit saan ka pumunta, sa taas, sa baba, sa kaliwa, sa kanan, sa harap, sa likuran, ikaw ay sinusurround at ino-overwhelm ng jablo sa problema, sa, sa, sa mga masakit na pangyayari sa buhay mo. This great battle of yours is so overwhelming that, you know, you, you cannot, you can no longer stand there. It is then when God will come to you and rescue you. Just like what He did and what He will do to Jerusalem. Amen? Maraming nagtangka at maraming gustong burahin sa mama ang Jerusalem, ang mga, ang mga pinili ng Diyos, ang mga tao ng Diyos. Pero ang Diyos ay laging nandun para sabihin, I will rescue you, I will protect you. Yes. Everybody, all of the nations who will gather against you, I will fight for you. Kaya kung tayo ka ng ating tubo ngayon is God will fight for you. Yes. Just like He will fight for Jerusalem. Just like He is fighting for Jerusalem. The, this very tiny nation of God has been through a lot of battles. Has been through a lot. Sobra po yung pinagdaanan nilang gyera, uh, pakikipagdigma. Pero every now and then, God will give them victory. Yeah. Alam niyo po nung na-establish ang 1948 ang Israel, right? Kinabukasan noon, ang Egypto, binong ba sila? Amen? Pero yung labang yun, napagtagumpayan nila. Ang pinaka-famous sa itong 1967, di ba ang bansa ang naglaban, ang nagsama-sama laban sa kanila, pero nagtagumpay sila. Di ba? Egypt dito sa baba, Jordan, Syria, Amen, Lebanon, uh, lahat po, uh, binabakaban pa ng Iran, para lang sila matunaw, mawala, matiris, madurog, mawasa, mabura, sa daigdig, mabura sa mapa. Pero every now and then, God is coming to rescue them, protect them, and give them victory. Amen? Ganun din sa buhay mo. Identify yourself with Jerusalem. Just as God fought for Jerusalem, God will fight for you. Amen. Ano man ang laban, ano man ang pinagdadaan mo, meron ka bang sakit, karamdaman, meron ka bang problema sa pamilya, problema sa negosyo, problema sa sarili, problema sa... sa sa anumang bagay, God is bigger than your problem. Amen. God is greater than your problem. God is bigger than your sickness, your disease, your need. God is greater than your enemy, your opposition, your burdens. God is way greater and bigger. Amen? Amen. Because God says, I will rescue you. Anybody who tries to attack you will endure themselves. Babalik sa kanila. Amen? Alam niyo po ba, Noong, uh, noong ang mga limang bansa sa 1967 Six Day War, limang bansa ay nagsama-sama para girahin ang, ang, ang Israel, napakaliit nilang bansa noong time na yun. Pero alam niyo po, ang ginawa ng Israel, pre-neep nila, ang ginawa ng Israel, tinira niya yung mga, ano lang, mga Egypt, yung lahat ng Air Force niya. Nag-ground lahat ng aircraft niya. Nawala, nawala, nawala ng power ang Egypt. Wala na silang aircraft, wala na silang aeroplano, naduro lahat, nawasak lahat. Hindi nila kalain. 
na ganun yung mangyayari. Sa so, anong nangyari? Sa ground forces, umatake ngayon ang, ang, ang Israel with matching uh, uh, air, air force. Nagtalo nila ang Egypt. Amen. Tapos ito naman sa northern part, yung Lebanon naman, yung Syria naman. Grabe po yung, yung parang ano, parang pelikula pero totoo ang nangyari na ganap. So matutal, after ng ika-anim na araw lang, anim na araw lang, lahat ng bansa na umatake sa kanila, nawasak na dulog na talo. Amen. Anong sinasabi ko rito? Malakas ang Diyos namin. Amen. Makapangyarihan. Amen. Malaki. He is bigger, He is powerful, and He is able to fight for you. Just as He was able to fight for Israel. Amen? Our God is great. It's a job. Job 37 verse 5. God thunders wondrously with His voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. Sa Isaiah 45 verse 5 to 7. I am the Lord. There is no other God besides me. I will equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know that from the rising of the sun from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Amen? At pinakamaganda, it's in Jeremiah 32, verse 27. The Lord says, Behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? The Lord is asking, is there anything too hard for me? Meron bang mahirap para sa akin gawin? Meron ka bang cancer? Meron ka bang bankruptcy? Meron ka bang anxiety? Meron ka bang suicidal thought? Gusto mo na bang sumuko? Hindi mo na alam kung saan ka susuli. Hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo sa buhay mo. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Jeremiah 20, 32 verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Can you answer that? Is there anything too hard for God? Meron bang mahirap para sa Panginoon? Wala! So kung walang mahirap para sa Panginoon, Amen. Ano yung concern ko ngayon? What is that very thing that overwhelms you? Amen. From side to side, left and right, front and back, up and down. You say you're overwhelmed with problems, trials, persecutions, attack of the enemy. The Lord is saying, Anak, pero bang mahirap para sa akin? Bakit hindi ka lumapit sa akin? Bakit hindi ka humingi ng tulong sa akin? Kung ang Israel na hindi ko pinabayahan eh. Pinakita ko sila ang, ang aking katapatan. Pinadama ko sa kanila ang aking katapatan. Hindi ko sila iniwan kahit na iniwan nila ako. Amen? The Lord is, the Lord's faithfulness towards Israel is a proof that God is trustworthy. Hindi po niya inawa, iniwanan ang mga Israelita. Hanggang ngayon, ipinaglalaban niya ang bansang Israel. Hanggang ngayon. Supernaturally, He is protecting this very tiny nation because they are the apple of His eyes. Because they are the, His chosen people. Until now, He is being faithful to His promise to their father, Abraham. Kaya nga, sabi ko nga, covenant-keeping God yung Panginoon eh. He does not fail on His promise. Yung binitawin ang pangako kay Abraham, hindi po niya yung pagbubukin. It, it, it will not fail. In the same manner that in our lives, whatever promises we have received from God, whatever vision, whatever dream, whatever mandate, whatever calling that we have received from God, God is trustworthy that He is able to sustain you, to help you, because He is bigger than your problems, bigger than your worries, bigger than your doubts, bigger than your unbelief. God is way bigger. Amen po ba? Amen. So, paano po niya gagawin yun? How will he defeat the enemies? Sa so, verse 4 to 5, yung Segaraya 12, tuloy natin. On that day, I will strike every horse with panic 
and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over Judah, but I will blind all the horses of the nations. Then the clans of Judah will say in their hearts, the people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sabi ng Panginoon, paano niya gagawin na i-defeat niya yung mga kaaway ng Jerusalem? He will create panic. Parang sa Judges 7, di ba? Sa Judges 7, 1 to 25, kinonfuse ng Panginoon yung mga kaaway ng mga Israelita. Sila sila mismo nag-confuse, na, na nagpatayan. Sila sila mismo ay uh, winasak nila ang kanilang mga sarili. God can do that. Supernaturally, He can intervene in your lives. Amen. Pwede, kaya-kaya niya mag-intervene sa buhay natin upang ang mga darks na kaaway sa buhay natin ay bubuluhin niya at hindi ito makakapanaid sa ating mga buhay. Amen? Why? Because God will keep a watchful eye. What do you mean watchful eye? Sabi ng Bible, He who keepeth Israel never slumbers nor sleep. Siya raw na nagkikip sa Israel ay hindi natutulog. He never slumbers nor sleeps. That's why he can keep a watchful eye. 24 hours, 24-7, every minute, every second, every millisecond of your life, he is watching over you. Because he never slumbers nor sleeps. So if he does that, what is your worry? Mali ba ikaw mismo ang tumalon? Mali ba ikaw mismo ang umalis? Para mawala ang protection ng God sa buhay mo. But if you remain in the center of the will of God in your life, I tell you, beloved, nobody and nothing can stop you, can harm you, can injure you. Because God's there to protect you. He never slumbers nor sleeps. He keeps a watchful eye over you. He knows everything about you. What you are thinking, what you are feeling, if you are sad, if you are lonely, if you are doubting, if you are worrying, God knows that because His watchful eye is over you. Amen? So, anong ginagawa po natin? Why don't we come to God and, and, and ask for His help? At sa buhay po ng mga taga-Israel, sabi doon, the people of Jerusalem are strong because the Lord Almighty is their God. Bakit daw po strong yung mga taga-Jerusalem? Because they are what? Taking vitamins? Because they are taking, ano, ano, ano sila ba'y nagkakaroon, nag, tumitake sila ng vitamins, kaya sila strong? Sila po ba'y uh, merong backup? Ang sabi doon sa verse 5, The people of Jerusalem are strong because the old Lord Almighty is their God. You are strong when your Lord Almighty is your God. Amen? Why don't you feel strong? Why do, why do you feel weak? Because the Lord promises if the Lord Almighty is your God, you are strong. Pero hindi mo naranasan. Why? Baka iba ang Lord mo. Baka hindi si Lord God Almighty ang Lord mo. Marami kang idols sa puso. You have a lot of idols in your heart. You have replaced the Lord Almighty in your heart. And so instead of becoming strong, you feel weak. You feel, you know, defeated. You feel like a loser. But Zechariah 12, 5 says, if the Lord Almighty is your God, you are strong. Amen? So if you have not put your trust in God, if you have not put your trust in the Lord yet, this is not the time. If you are worrying, if you have a lot of problems, going through trials, tribulations, battles, it seems like you are suffocated. It seems like you are dying. Para mamamatay ka na. Bakit hindi mo ibigay sa Diyos ang buhay Bakit hindi mo ipagkatiwala sa Panginoon ang buhay mo? So verse 5, tuloy po natin sabi na to, On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a fire pot in a wood pile, like a flaming torch among sheaves. They will consume all the surrounding peoples right and left, but Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. Anong sinario nito? May big fire, di ba? Sabi ka nun? Ang fire pot in a wood pile, yung fire pot po ay yung lalagyan ng mga uli. Yung may napagsinindihan mo at tinitsa mo, yun po yung nagiging sanay ng isang malaking sunog. At ganun po ang gagawin ng Diyos. Susunugin niya ang lahat ng umaatake sa'yo. Susunugin niya ang lahat ng problema, lahat ng kabalisahan mo. All of your worries, all of your problems, all of your battles, all, everything that is, you know, making 
oppressing you. Lahat mo na nagpapahirap sa inyo, susunugin ng Diyos yan. But He will keep you safe. Sabi po doon sa verse 6, Jerusalem will remain intact. Lahat ng paligid niya nasunog, pero Jerusalem, iingatan ng Diyos. It will be kept safe. It will be intact. Amen? Amen. So verse 6, a fire pot in a wood pile, you know? It is something, a small fire, that will become a big fire. But in all of that, Jerusalem will be spared. Jerusalem will be saved. In the same manner, magkakagulo ang buong mundo. Masusunog, so to speak, figuratively speaking, ang lahat ng bagay sa paligid mo, pero ikaw hindi ka masusunog. Tamang sabi ng Bible, you will walk through the fire, but it will not burn you. You will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but you will not fear even, even death itself. Naalala niyo yung Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? Tinapon sila sa kubon. Amen? Sabagat sumamba, ayaw nilang sumamba sa rebulto ni Nebuchadnezzar. Ano mong naging parang sa nila? Tinapon sila sa kubon. Pagtapon sa kubon, namatay yung mga, nakalapit yung mga gwardiya, sila yung nasunog. Pero nakita po nila, yung tatlong kabataan, naglalakad. Naglalakad sa apoy. Pumihin ang Panginoon. Hindi po sila nasunog. At nakita nila, bakit naging apat? Somebody was walking with them. It was the Lord. Sometimes, God will not take you out of the fire in your life. He will allow you to go into the fire. And you fear that you will die, that you will burn. But God has promised, I will walk with you through the fire. That you will not burn. Can you believe that? Amen. Pero hindi, konti pala yung problema natin. Hindi pala ka po yun, ha? Pero namamatay na tayo sa pag-aalala, sa kawalan ng pagtitiwala. Pero sinasabi ng Panginoon, Anak, itatapon ka sa ako eh. Sasamahan kita, ililigtas kita. Kagaya ng ginagawa ko sa Jerusalem. Kagaya ng ginagawa ko sa aking, sa, sa aking minamahal na Israel. Amen? On that day, this fire pot in a wood pile will start fire but Jerusalem will be kept safe. Amen? Sabagat sabi sa verse 5, because you are strong, because the Lord Almighty is your God. Amen? Amen. So God will be like a fire. Sabi ng Bible, He will be like a fire, a consuming fire. The Lord will be a consuming fire that will consume His enemies. Sa buhay mo, meron, mga, meron bang, uh, meron marami ka bang kalaban? Ang Diyos ay bababa bilang isang consuming fire. Fire. Amen? So verse 7, The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first so that the honor of the house of David and of Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. And on that day, so verse 8, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them will be like David. The house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. Amen? Ano pinapakita ng, ng Lord dito? Military tactic, di ba? Kagaya ng Israel, napakaliit na bansa. Pero tingnan mo, meron nilang iron dome. 4,000 rockets ang pinakawala ng Hamas. Pero ilang piraso lang naka... You know, because it is God who is sustaining Israel, protecting Israel, amen? Guiding Israel, giving them the wisdom, giving them the tactics and the strategies to win their battles and their wars. In the same manner that the Lord is saying, dito sa Zechariah 12 verse 8, God, on the defensive side and on the offensive side, ang sabi po doon, the Lord will shield Jerusalem. At the same time, those who will be going forth beyond, you know, the, 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 the line, ay magkakaroon po sila ng superhuman ability to conquer, superhuman ability to win their battles and their wars. Amen? Yes. So verse 9, sabi doon, The Lord, on that day I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. So this should serve as a warning to those who will try to attack Jerusalem. But they do not know this. Zechariah 12, 9. On that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. Sino mo nagsasalita nito? The Lord Himself. Do sa verse 1, the word of the Lord. Amen? 
It is the Lord Himself, and the Lord is saying, I will destroy the nations that will attack Jerusalem. If they should know, they should not touch Jerusalem. But they don't know. They don't know. Zechariah 12, 9. And so they keep on attacking. And so they keep on being defeated. Amen? Ang dami lang nagtaka. But in the last days, tataas pa po yung aggression towards Israel. And in fact, someday, they will really be crushed to the ground again. So that they will they will call out to God again. Lahat po na oppression na ito ay nangyayari sa, sa, sa Israel with the permissive will of God. Because they have rejected their Messiah. When the Messiah first came along, di ba, 2,000 years ago, they have rejected their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this oppression is allowed, being permissibly allowed by the Lord towards Israel so that they will turn, just like in the old days, they will turn to God for help. Just like when they were oppressed in the, in the, in the land of Egypt for 400 years, being slaves to the Pharaoh. What did they do? They turned to God and asked for God. And God sent Moses to save them and free them from slavery. In the last days, they will be oppressed once again. They will be raised to the ground. Daka na sila, no? wala na silang matatakbuhan. Pero dito, darating ang kanilang Messiah. But it is the false Christ, the Antichrist. Dapang daba na sila. Dapang daba na sila. The nations, sabi ko sa ating binasa, nations will come all together. It's not just one nation, but all the nations of the world will come to Israel and make war on them. How can they defeat all the nations of the earth? Napaka, napakaliit nilang bansa. Amen? And so they will turn to the Antichrist for help. At darating si Antichrist para sila bigyan ng kapayamahan and they will be deceived they will embrace Antichrist they thought this is their Messiah they thought this is their Christ Amen. at kanila pong i-embrace at tatanggapin nila because it is this Antichrist that will give them the peace that they have been longing for for a long time magkakaroon sila ng kapayamahan for three and a half years they will have peace the, yung long peace nila yung magkakaroon magagaya. Mabibigyan sila ng kapayapaan. Hindi na sila gigirahin. Kagaya na ngayon. Kaya naman, yayakapin nila si Antichrist. Tatanggapin nila. At ito na po yung tribulation. The great tribulation. But after three and a half years, kagaya ng tinuro po, he will unmask himself and reveal himself as the Antichrist. Satan incarnate. At dito, ipuporso na niya ang mga Jews, paparosahan na niya. He will kill them, he will he will annihilate them. He will persecute them. And he will call upon the nations of the earth to come against Israel. Which will culminate into the battle of Armageddon. At the end of the tribulation period. This will be the greatest battle in history. Because it will be all the nations of the earth against one nation, Israel. And mo, paano malaban ang Israel? Against all the nations of the earth. Napaka-konti po nila. Alam niyo po, in one day, kaya kong it, nung tayo pumunta kami doon, kaya kong itour ang Jerusalem in one day, by, by foot. Ganon kaliit na bansa. Tapos ang malaban nila, buong daigdig. Again, the army of Antichrist. But it will take the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ Himself to come down from heaven on the Mount of Zion to defend Israel. It will be God Himself who will defend Israel. That is why dito sa Zechariah, all who attack Jerusalem will be destroyed. Zechariah 12.9 Ngayon, ano yung kinalaman nun sa atin? Diba? Ano yung kinalaman? Just as God can defend Israel, He can defend you too. He can fight for you. For thousands of years, the faithfulness of God towards Israel is proven. Napatunayan na. 
yung katapatan ng Diyos ay sila hanggang sa dulo. God never gives up on them. He never gives up on Israel. Kahit na ang Israel nag-wayward, wayward. Amen? He never gives up on them. What am I saying? God does not give up on you. God does not give up on me. Amen? No matter what happens, He will come and rescue you. He will come and protect you. He will come and bless you. On that day, I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. God Himself will deliver Israel from its enemies. Through what? Panic horses, mud riders, blind horses. Yung sinasabi nun. Eh, he was, Zechariah was speaking during his time. Wala pang mga bullet train noon. Wala pang mga tanke noon. Wala pa yung mga weaponries and armaments. Amen? Mga horses lang noong unang panahon. So he is talking about his time. Pero in our time, there are no horses na, di ba? Wala namang mga horses. Pag lumaban yung mga sundalo natin, hindi naman sila nakasakay sa kabayo eh. Nakasakay sila sa mga aeroplano, may drone, mayroong ano, ano, run by computers, di ba? Yung mga, ang gagaling nyo ba? Yung, yung mga drone, walang tao, pero sila yung nangaka-atake. Nakita nyo yung mga pinapabagsak ng Israel na mga building, very precise. Ang unang, ina-knockdown nila dalawang parang warning para lumabas yung mga tao doon. Pagkatapos yung titirahin nila sa pundasyon, pundasyon tapos kala mo, bumabagsak na, ano, domino. How precise it is. Lahat yun, run by computer, meron siya ng command center. Ganun din sa enemy. So what will God do? He will, maybe He will make the computer system way haywire. Kaya yung mga kalaban, hindi nila lang, paano ang nangyari? Hindi na, hindi na, hindi na natin mapapaandal yung mga ano natin. Yung mga computerized, yung mga weaponries natin. Yung nuclear natin, hindi natin ma-launch. Amen? I don't know how God will do it, but what I know is that God Himself will fight for Israel. Just like you, God is willing to fight for you. Ano man ang laban mo, ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo, ano man ang problema mo, ano man kabigat ang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, tutulungan ka ng Diyos. Kaya kang tulungan ng Diyos. Amen? Defensively, offensively, kaya kang tulungan ng Diyos. Amen? Kagaya ng ginawa ng Israel. So, right now, they have enemies, they have burdens, they have battles, they have problems, they have doubts, struggles, worries, unbelief, anxiety, infirmity, sickness, disease. What are you having right now? In the whole magnitude of kagaya ng all nations against Israel. Lahat nagtulong-tulong para ka ibagsa. Amen? Can you trust God that God will fight for you? Amen. Can you trust God that God will defeat every attack of the enemy in your life? That God can and God will. Amen. So you are listening right now and you have sickness or disease, infirmity, incurable as it is. God can set you free. God can heal you. God can touch you. God can give you victory. So, pagkita po natin sa Zechariah 12, 1 to 9, it is the military battle that God will give victory upon Israel. Amen. Pero pagkita po natin sa verse 10, Sabi po ng Panginoon, and I will pour upon the house of David, upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness. May kita po natin dito, biglang iyakan, great supplication, pagkatapos ng victory, they were mourning, they were weeping, Amen. God has given Israel physical victory in battle in order to pre prepare them for spiritual mourning. Sila ay binigyan ng katag katagumpayan para ma-realize nila na ang Diyos ang nagligtas sa kanila. At once and for all, i-recognize nila ang Panginoon sa buhay nila. Kasi ang tagal na po nilang disobedient. Ang tagal na po nilang disobedient. So finally, sabi po doon, I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. It came when the Lord Jesus Christ, the God incarnate, came to the earth. Naging tao, hinubad ang pagkadyos para mabayubay sa krus ng Kalbaryo upang tayo mabigayaan ng kaligtasan. Grace speaks of salvation. 
It is the salvation on the cross. And supplication. What is supplication? Supplication means prayer. Prayer is what? Talking to God. And when you talk to God, that means you have a relationship with God. You cannot talk to somebody if you don't know somebody. You cannot talk to somebody kung wala kang relationship sa kanya. So supplication means relationship with God. Connection with God. At ito ang nais ang Panginoon. Binibigyan po kayo ng physical victory. Military victory. Your triumph over your enemy. Not because you will celebrate. Pagkatapos ng celebrate, tapos-tapos na. Hindi. Ang dahilan nun, i-acknowledge mo ang Diyos sa buhay mo na matagal mo nang ini-ignore. I-acknowledge mo ang Diyos sa buhay mo na siyang tumulong sa'yo, nagligtas sa'yo, hindi ka pinabayaan kahit kailan. Amen. Amen. God wants to heal us. Amen, Marin? Nakikinig ka ngayon, you're not just a Christian. You have put your, foot, your, your, your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But God is willing to heal you. God is willing to free you from your sickness and disease. Amen? Walang mahirap pa sa Diyos. He's so Amen. great and powerful that He can heal you from cancer, from brain tumor, from kidney failure. God can raise you up, you know? If you are ikaw ay uh, imbali ko na, God can do that. For what? To prepare you into spiritual mourning. To prepare you into spiritual recognition that you need God in your life. Sometimes, kinakailangan natin maranasan yun para malaman natin na kailangan natin ang Diyos. Si Jesus Christ, when He hung on the cross, He paid the way for the spiritual victory. Kaya hindi sa patang na ikaw ay bumalik. Hindi sa patang na ikaw ay mapagpala. Higit sa lahat, kinakalil yung spirito mo ay magkaroon din ng tagumpay. At ito po, ang tagumpay po na sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, sabi nyo, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. This is a prophetic a pronouncement, no piercing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Siya po ay tinusok, tinunos ng pierce ng mga Roman soldiers. Amen? This is a prophetic, one of the greatest prophetic revelation from the mouth of Zechariah. Nakita na niya, 2,000 years, uh, no, bago dumating si Jesus Christ, nakita na niya na siya'y tinulos. At yun po naging daan ng spiritual awakening. Amen? It is not enough that you have physical victory. It is not enough that you have physical healing. But most of all, you need to have spiritual awakening. You need to have the grace of God, the supplication of God in your life. Amen? Amen. Sa John 19, 36-37, nagkaroon ito ng katuparan. For these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not a bone of, of his will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. John 19, 36-37. Amen? So, from Zechariah 12, 1-9, ito po yung military victory. Pero hindi po nagtapos doon. Ang purpose ng military victory na ipagkakalog ng Diyos sa Israel ay for them to have a spiritual awakening. Sapagat napakatagal na pong panahon na hindi nila ito ginawa. Hindi po nila ito inaknarin sa buhay nila. So, God wants to heal us to save us. Kasi kung ikaw ay bumalik, hindi ka naman papasok ng langit. Ano yun? Amen? Kinakailangan, yung kaluluwa mo, yung spirit mo, may magkaroon ng deliverance. Your physical deliverance should lead to your spiritual deliverance. Your spiritual victory, uh, your physical victory should lead to your spiritual victory. And that is exactly what God's purpose is. Amen? Sa buhay ko ng mga Israelita, bibigyan sila at ipagtatakbol ng Diyos. Pag, pagdating po ng Battle of Armageddon, makikita nila mismo ang Diyos ay bababa para sila ay ipagtanggol. Amen? Para ano? Para once and for all sila ay lumagapak sa lupa at magsabi and, and mourn and have a broken spirit to acknowledge that it is the Lord God Almighty in their lives who has saved them. Amen? So most of the time, you know, we go through battles and problems, trials and tribulations. Marahil meron tayong pinagdadaan ng mabigat ngayon. Dahil mo ito mabigat. God is sometimes allowing us to go through tribulations in life so that we will be able to see the salvation and deliverance of God. Yes. Israel has been suffering for thousands of years. 
until now, they cannot see the fulfillment of the of the promise, the consummation of the promise upon their lives. Until now, they are suffering, they are scattered, they are struggling. But it is because God allowed them to. Because they have not acknowledged God in their lives. Hanggang ngayon, they reject nila yung kanilang mesaya. So hanggang ngayon, nagdurusa sila. On each side, lahat, mula north to south, east to west, pinapaligiran sila, pinubukob sila. Gusto silang patayin, gusto silang mawala, magbura sa nama. And the, the Lord has allowed that. Sometimes the Lord allows tribulation in our lives, just like the Israelites. So that we will see God's deliverance. We will see His mighty working in our lives, just like He has done and He will do in Israel. He will give them physical deliverance, military victory, so that they will be able to have spiritual awakening. Amen? The Jews, when they will experience the greatest and glorious deliverance of God Himself upon their lives, fighting for them, going through them in their trials and tribulations, and each and every prophecy will be fulfilled, fighting, you know, for for this tiny nation. Sa buhay din po natin mara, pwede natin maranasan. Kagaya ng mga Israelita, God will fight for us. Amen. Whatever we are going through right now, whatever trials and testing, let us not for God, forget that God is great. He is mighty and able to deliver us. Let us not doubt His love. Let us not doubt His faithfulness. Let us not doubt His power or His very existence. Kasi minsan, pag sobra yung sakit na nararamdaman natin, pag sobrang bigat, di ba sabi natin, Lord, nandiyan ka pa ba? Totoo ka pa ba? Di ba? We sometimes are pushed to even doubt the very existence of God. Totoo ba? Lalo na may nabuhuyo ba? Malis ka na dyan. Tingnan mo. Nung mula nung nabuhar na dito, tingnan mo yung buhay mo. O, meron pa mga nabuhuyo. Di ba? Nangasar. Amen? Darts of the enemy. Thoughts. Amen? Kaya kailangan ko ng revelation. You need the revelation of God. That this revelation will sustain you. Ano man ang mangyari. Huwag mo pagdududahan yung tawag mo. Amen? Ang tawag mo hindi nagbabago. Kagaya ng mga Israelita, hindi sila sinukuha ng Panginoon. Ang dami nilang mga mga ang dami nilang mga failures sila perfect na nation, pero hindi sila sinukuan ng Diyos. Sa Romans 8, 35 to 39, ang sabi doon, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will troubles, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? Are these going to separate you from the love of God? As it is written, verse 6, 36, For your sake we encountered death all day long. We were considered a sheep to be slaughtered. But no, in all these things, we have complete victory through Him who loves us. For I am convinced, verse 38, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor heavenly rulers, nor things that are present, nor things that are to come, nor the powers, nor the height, nor the depth, nor anything else in God's creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Meron ka bang problema ngayon? Meron ka bang pinagdadaanan? Kaya ka ba niyang alisin sa presensya ng Diyos? Will it separate you from the love of God? Will it separate you from your calling? Will you give up? Will you doubt God? Or will you believe that nothing, no one, separate you from the love of God. Amen? Just like Israel. God's faithfulness to Israel is a proof that God is trustworthy. Siya po ay mapagkakatiwalaan natin. Amen po ba? Amen. So ano man ang pinagdaraanan natin ngayon, meron po tayong Diyos na malaki. Amen. Malakas, makapangyarihan, may kakayanan na tayo ipaglaban, na tayo ipagtanggol. Ano man ang pangangailangan natin sa Diyos na ngayon, ilapit po natin. Ang una natin gawin, let us 
accept, you know, let us humble ourselves before God. Let us cry out to Him just like the Israelites. Ask for His help. Ask for His power. Let us not be separated from His love. Ever. Ever. Huwag kang pumayo. Amen? Kahit ano pong pinagdadaan mo, kahit masakit, huwag mo kaya, Lord, iiyak mo sa Diyos yan. Sabi mo, Lord, huwag mo kung haya ang wala. Huwag mo kung haya ang mahiwalay sa'yo. Huwag mo kung haya ang wala sa pag-ibig mo. Sabagat sa pag-ibig, sa presensya ng Panginoon lamang tayo. Meron pa may apaan, meron pa talakan, meron pa lakasan. Amen? Amen. Hindi ko alam kung anong pinagdadaanan mo ngayon. Pero nawa, sa narinig mong ito, magtiwala ka sa Panginoon. Yes. Mahal ka ng Panginoon. At sa oras na ito, kaya ka niyang tulungan, kaya ka niyang bigyan ng kapayapaan, kagalakan, kagalingan, himala, pagpapala, katagumpayan. God is willing and able. But first of all, let us come to Him and humble ourselves before Him and put our trust in Him. Let us ask the Lord for forgiveness in our lives. If we have doubted, if we have neglected His presence in our lives. Hallelujah. Tayo mo lahat na yung upot, pumigit ikaw na na yung nasa iyong tahanan, nasa ang dako ka ba ng daiti. Ilapit mo ang puso mo sa Diyos, ilapit mo ang buhay mo sa Diyos, isubo mo lahat sa Panginoon. Sabihin mo sa Kanya, Panginoon, patawarin mo ako. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y nagulap, nagduda, nagalit, nagtampo, naginanagin. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y nagtasada. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y nagkaroon ng malikotibo. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y naghihinalaki. May tampo sa manang loob. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon, anumang bagay sa puso ko na hindi ka nais-nais. Whatever it is that is in my heart that displeases you, oh God, forgive me, cleanse me. Forgive me for my unforgiveness. Forgive me for my hatred, anger, bitterness. Forgive me for my worries, doubts, and unbeliefs. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my rebellion. Forgive me for my wrong motive. Forgive me for my lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Forgive me, O oh God. Cleanse me with your precious blood. And I come to you and surrender to you everything. Come into my life. Be my Lord, be my God, be my Savior, Jesus. And from now on, let your will be done in my life. Write my name in the book of life. Let it not be ever erased again. Protect me, Lord. Sustain me. Help me. I know that you are bigger than my problems. I know that you are bigger and greater than my sickness or disease. And so I ask for your help in the name of Jesus. Come on, reach out to God. God will fight for you. God will fight for you. God will help you. And so whatever you need from God right now, tell Him. Reach out to Him. Yes, O oh God, as you have said in your word, just like you have fought for Jerusalem and will continue to fight for Jerusalem, for Israel, O oh Lord, you will help your people. You will help your people who are reaching out to you, whatever they need from you right now, O oh God. Heal them. Touch them. Do a miracle in their lives in Jesus' name. Come on. Call out to God. Tell Him what you need. Tulungan ka ng Panginoon. Abutin ka ng Panginoon. Nangihina ka ba? Are you weak? Are you doubting? Are you unbelieving right now? Are you doubting your mandate, your calling? Have you been hurt? And you have been hurt so hard that you want to give up. Right now, just receive the very presence of God. Just receive the very presence of God. The Holy Spirit is touching you. The Holy Spirit is just moving in you right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. 
Are you anxious, worried? The peace of God be upon you. The peace of God be upon you. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ.
Lord is saying, I am a covenant keeping God. I fail not. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I change not, saith the Lord. Just receive. Receive the very presence of God in your family, in your life. God is setting you free from all kinds of vices and sin. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. The Lord is setting you free to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, O oh God, itinataas po namin, Panginoon, ang aming mga mahal sa buhay, na mahirap pabago ng tao. Pero nananampalataya kami, kaya mong baguhin sa pagkatikaw ng Diyos na makapangyarihan. Panginoon, itinataas po namin ang tao nito. Pagkitin niyo ang pangalan ng tao nito. At ang Diyos, Binabago ang kaisipan, binabago ang buhay, binabago ang lahat ng direksyon ng tao nito. Pinapakialaman ng Diyos. Gumagaw ang Diyos. The Lord is just moving in the life of this person right now. That you are lifting up in prayer. Come on! Just lift him up in prayer. This person that is difficult, this person that is hard-headed, God is just changing him. God is just touching him. God is just melting his heart in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh God. We speak, we speak deliverance, oh Lord. We speak change, oh God, upon this person, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Salvation, oh God, and restoration. Hallelujah. Yes. Whatever you need, whatever you need from God. Oh, 
will be blessed. Yes. So we receive blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pasalamatan po natin ang Panginoon. Yes. Just thank the Lord for your healing. Just thank the Lord for your miracle, for your peace, for your love that has set you free. Pinalaya ka sa galing po at sa panang loob binanakit. At malaya ka mga paglilingkod. Wala ka naman mga mag-iiwalay sa iyo sa mag-ibig ng Diyos. Nothing and no one can separate you from the love of God. You will fulfill your mandate. You will do your calling faithfully until the Lord comes again. And nobody can stop you. Nothing can stop you. The Lord is saying, Oh, just receive the love of God. Just receive the peace of God. And just receive the strength of God. Hallelujah. Yes, oh God. Salamatan po natin ang Panginoon. Yes, oh Lord God. Seal every word. Seal every prophecy every revelation and let this revelation burn in our hearts. Sustain us until you come again. Help us be faithful to our calling. Help us not give up. Help us not be able to wave and doubt and not believe. But help us become strong and mighty and have victory. Thank you, Lord. Nothing no one can separate us from your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord. To your name be the glory now and forever. In Jesus' name. Humble yourself before the Lord and He will exalt you. Amen. So, ang uh, aking pong i-exert uh, today for our offering is about humility. Diba? So, you may ask me, bakit humility? But we are about to talk. I mean, we are about to talk. Uh, we are about to talk um, offering. Amen. Exhortation of offering. Pero bakit humility? Amen. Diba? Sabi po kasi ng Lord sa akin, you know, Humility goes a long way. Amen po ba? Pag ikaw po daw ay humble, amen, marami ka daw po pupuntahan. Amen po ba? At malayo daw po ang pupuntahan. And right now, I want to emphasize again that the act of giving to the Lord is a sign of showing humility. Amen po ba? Alam niyo po kasi mahirap magpakumbaba. Amen po ba? Especially in this time, in this age that we are very human-centric, to the point that we always prioritize our needs, amen po ba? At understandable po yun, bilang mga tao na pag may pangangailangan po tayo, unahin natin siya, amen po ba? Pero sabi ng Panginoon, ang mga tuloy ng Kristiyano, alam niya ang priority niya. Amen po ba? Amen. At ang mga tuloy ng Kristiyano, alam niya na kahit na may problema, kahit na piling na ang mundo ay nagpukula, alam niya ang Diyos ay laging pupunuan siya. Amen po ba? Amen. So sabi ng Lord, humble yourselves and He will exalt you. Amen. Nakakatuwa po, hindi lang po sabi ng Lord na ikaw ay magpakumbaba. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, itataas kita. Amen po ba? Amen. So sa ating pong pagbibigay sa ating tunay na iglesia, sa ating church, Amen po ba? The Lord will exalt us. Amen. Sabi din po sa 1 Peter 5 verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time He may exalt you. Amen. Napakaganda po nito. Sinabi po dito, at the proper time of God, He will exalt you. Ayan po ba? So sabi ng Lord, may perfect timing. 
kung kailan ka niya itataas, yan po ba? So, kung ikaw ngayon ay feeling mo, Lord, walang wala ako, o kaya, Lord, nagpukulang, kulang ito, kulang ayan, ito, ayan, amen. Sabi ng Lord, anak ko ka magtagpag-alala. Amen? Amen. Patuloy mo lang ihambol ang sarili mo. Kung ikaw ay nagbibigay sa tunay na iglesia, patuloy ka magbigay. Amen. At kung ikaw ay hindi nakapagbibigay, magbigay ka. Amen. At akong bahala, in perfect time, I will exalt. Amen. 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 So, huwag po tayong matakot. So, for those who are listening right now, don't be afraid, don't be uh, discouraged. Just be humble. Amen. Humble yourself, especially in the act of giving. Because God will exalt you in His perfect time. Amen. And why and to whom do we give? Amen. So for those who are new, we are giving our tithes. Amen. Our offering, our love gifts, our pledges. Amen po ba? For the real church. Right now, we are continue, continuously using that to propagate the word. Amen. So, ang likod ng Diyos, the man of God, is not here right now. Diba? Nalala nyo sa mga last Sunday, sinabi ko, ang binaba ng likod Diyos na we have to continuously go around, amen, different parts of the Philippines and hopefully different nations of the world as soon as this Corona COVID-19 uh, dies down, diba? So, the woman of God, pagtuloy natin siya makakasama, amen, sa uh, main church habang mga ipod ng Diyos ay ikos eh, pati pang pati ng buong Pilipinas at ang buong ito. At paano po ba makakalikot ang ipod ng Diyos, amen, dahil po may mga sumusupport, amen? Amen. Because you are supporting. Sabi mo sa katuloy mo, salamat sa pagsuporta. Salamat sa pagsuporta. Amen. At salamat sa patuloy na pagsuporta. <laughs> Amen. So, huwag po tayong mag-doubt, huwag po tayong mag-alaga, dahil patuloy po natin ginagamit yan para sa ikatataas ng salita ng Diyos. Amen. At ngayon po, um, we are going to give out the uh, envelope. Amen po ba? Now, I prioritize po natin ang sa church. Amen. Meron po tayo sa envelope, meron po tayo for the church. Now ay, um, as much as possible, at kung kaya po talaga natin, ihuray pa po natin sa ating tithes, ating offerings, ating benches, love gifts, etc. Lagyan po natin yung sa church. Amen. Kasi po, gagamitin po ulit natin yan sa pagbabayad ng ating bills. Amen po ba? We are continuously paying our bills and we are continuously expanding our church. Amen. Natutuwa po ba tayo? Meron po tayo. Amen po ba? At nakakatuwa po dahil yung mga ating mga Christian worship, nakaka-practice, hindi na pawisan. Amen po ba? So, with, with the continuous uh, beautification, with the continuous expansion, amen, sa patuloy na pagpapaganda ng ating church, pagpapalaki tayo na kikinabang, tumataas yung mga ating bills. Amen po ba? At alam ko po na tayo-tayo din po na tunay na members of KLJF ang magtutulungan. Amen po ba? Amen. At alam niyo po, nakakatuwa dahil sabi nga nung ninyo ng Diyos, sabi ko, ma, patuloy na dumalaki yung ato natin ah. Bills. <laughs> Kasi pa ako po yung sasanag. Ah, nang nagpupayan, di ba? So sabi nga, kami yan ha. Amen. Amen po ba? Amen. Sabi nga ganun. Ibig sabihin, patuloy na pinapalaki ng Lord ang tent natin. Amen po ba? So sabi ko, amen, amen. Totoo yun. Nakakatuwa po, amen po ba? Amen. Sabi nga din sa akin na, anak, pag pag patuloy na lumalaki ang ating bills, ang ating mga binabayaran, patuloy na dumadami yung mga umaaten, patuloy na marami tayong pinapakain ng taga kayo, JF, ibig sabihin, ang Lord, pinapalaki yung tent natin. Amen po ba? At yun po talaga yung aking um, pinakahawakan niya yun. Amen po ba? Amen. Kaya sabi ko, kasi si Kuya Eric, pag lalapit kayo sa akin, so, so, magbabayad tayong bills. Amen po ba? So, pag lalapit si Kuya Eric, parang gusto ko tumakbo din sa akin. Amen. <laughs> So sabi ko, okay, ano na naman tayo, di ba? Pero ngayon, parang alam mo yun, mapap, talagang mapapaisip ka na, Lord, napakabayit mo. Eh, yun po ba? Kasi noon, iniisip ko talaga na, sabi ko, grabe, Lord, ang bayit mo, ang laki ng mga binabayaran namin. Ilang years ang KOJF, eh, yun po ba? Pero sabi ko, Lord, ang laki ng mga binabayaran namin. Ngayon ako humahawak, isa sa mga humahawak, talagang ako makakita ng goodness ng Lord. Amen. At yun kaya lagi mo sinasabi ng ikot ng Diyos, ng ating Papa, yan, na panalangin mo yung mga sumusuporta sa KOJF. Kasi talagang ang KOJF talagang ng Lord nagpo-provide kung may humahawak ng ikot ng mga tao. Amen po ba? Na nagpo-provide ng support. Kaya gusto ko po iparating sa inyo na ang KOJF been going on for the longest time because there are people like you are who are humble. Amen po ba? 
So, meron po kasi mga tao na talagang humble, na talagang nasasakrifisyon giving, inuuna ang Panginoon. Eh, yun po ba? So, again, let me go back. So, again, the act of giving is an act of humility. Eh, yun po ba? And for those people who have been helping the HAF, who have been paying the bills of the church, eh, yun po ba? Who have been supporting the man of God, who have been giving their tithes, offering, love gifts, pledges, wholeheartedly. Lahat po yan, inexalt ng Panginoon. Eh, yun po ba? wala pong bibigoy ng Panginoon. Kaya tignan nyo po, yung mga nag-donate, nagbigay ng ating aircon, eh, yun po ba, lahat po yan, hindi po tao, eh, yun po ba, hindi po ako, hindi po ang bibigoy ng Diyos, hindi ang Panginoon. At kumawak lang siya ng mga tao na nag-provide at nag-provide mga nag-donate para sa ating CR, Church Expansion, Radio TV Anniversary, Radio and uh, TV uh, Expenses, lahat po yan, pinovide ng mga talagang hindi po ng Panginoon at nagpakumbaba at nag- Uh, naging humble. Amen po ba? At ang Lord, hindi po kayo bibigoy. Amen? So, alam niyo po yan, di ba? Kilala niyo na po yan. Kilala niyo na sa sarili niyo na kayo po ay talagang matuloy na tumutulong, sumusuporta sa ating tunay na iglesia. So, for those who are listening right now in our uh, live, if you are able to give um, now, do not worry. We will be providing the information about. So, for those who are giving through our live, Please do give your types offering through our GCash, BBI, BBO, China Bank. So China Bank has opened again. So nag-open po rin tayo ating China Bank account sa ating uh, nakapakala po sa church natin yung China Bank account. Amen po ba? So meron po tayo BBI, BBO, and hopefully we could continue to give. Amen po ba? Ating types offering ay hindi po namin kayo kasama dito. Amen po. So sa ating mga, lalo na sa may mga may kakayanan. Amen po ba? So, po, this is really the time that the church needs us. Amen. And, alam niyo po, nakakatuwa na talagang during the pandemic crisis, talagang may mga tao tapat na nagbigay. At ang Lord naman naging tapat din sa kanya. Amen po ba? At walang naghirap na taga kayo, Jen. Amen? Amen. Sige po. At uh, wag po natin kalimutan ng ating uh, love gifts. Amen po ba? For the man and woman of God. So, uh, we all know that the man and woman of God are full-time workers. The man of God ay ipot sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas, amen po ba? At now ay mabrilliant po tayo na supportahan din po natin. Huwag po natin galimutan ng love gift, amen po ba? So, uh, for our love gift, magbabayaran po ng mission, amen po ba? Ang ating... Um, mga uh, anak, amen po ba, ang lingkod ng Diyos, sobrang awkward para sa akin sa lingkod. Pero sabi nga, this is really um, the truth, amen po ba? Kasi wala naman po talaga pukunan, amen, ang um, pamilya ng lingkod ng Diyos, umasa din po talaga kami sa Panginoon, amen po ba? At nakakatuwa na talaga, he never, he never, he's never late, amen po ba? May perfect night talaga ang Panginoon. So kung ikaw ang hinihipo ng Lord, amen, magbigay para po sa ating function, amen po ba? Para sa, sobrang awkward pala rin na, no? Para sa anak ng mga lingkod ng Diyos, amen po ba? So, ibigay po natin ang ating love gift at huwag po tayong mag-alala. Sabi po ng Panginoon sa Timothy 5.17, that elders who rule be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor and teaching and preaching. So, huwag daw po tayong mag-alala, supportahan ng ating mga lingkod ng Diyos dahil sila po ang una sa lahat nag-labor and teaching. Amen, amen po ba? Uh, alam niyo, hindi po biro mag-prepare ng turo, lalo na si Mama Magi, dalawang turo po ang kanyang gagawin. Amen po ba? So talagang alam po po na kung ano nakaka-drain niya. Amen? Kasi talagang yung anointing, kailangan din yung bis. Amen po ba? Kailangan lagi ka nakasentro sa puso ng Panginoon at hindi po siya biro. Amen? So wag po natin kalimutan ang ating love gifts. Please do give out your love gifts as well for the man and woman of God to bless them, but most of all, to bless you. Amen and your family. Sige, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for, again, the opportunity you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to be humble. Lord, thank you for uh, reminding us that the act of giving is a sign of humility. And Lord, this is the time where the world is very not humble, and may we not be like the world, Father God. Lord, thank you, Father God, for the people who have been Use and you are continuously using to bless Father God your true ministry, to bless the man and woman of God and his family. Lord, thank you, Father God, for 
continuous promotion of Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship International. Thank you, Lord, for the continuous promotion of everyone who's listening right now. Thank you, Lord, Father God, for continue, for we are continuously going up, Father God. Lord, thank you right now. We are in an open heaven and you're pouring out your blessings, Father God. And we, Father God, we will receive your blessings. This is the time, Father God, for the money of the evil to be continuously transferred to the KMJF, Father God. Ilipat mo ang pera ng mundo ng masasama sa KMJF, Father God. Upang magagal tamang namin sa ikatataas na iyong salita, ikakapalagahan na iyong salita sa buong Pilipinas at ang buong mundo. Lord, this is the continuous time for the continuous propagation of your word at ang kingdom of Jesus fellowship at kami, Father God, ang mahumunan dito. At Lord, ikaw ang mag-provide, ikaw ang hihipo ng maraming tao, ikaw magdadala ng mga supporters, mag-release sa mga supporters yes. ng KLJF. Ikaw ang magpapayaman, ikaw ang magpapalaki, ikaw ang magbibigay, ikaw ang mag-provide, ikaw ang magsusupport, Father God. So Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. As we be humble, you will exalt us in your perfect time, Father God. And Lord, we know this is the perfect time for our exaltation because you, Father God, are the, you, Father God, are the God that we serve, Father God. So, Lord, maraming salamat for the continuous multiplication of our blessings, multiplication, Father God, for the needs of the ministry, Father God. Patuloy namin magpapa-expand ang aming church. Ikaw, Father, magdadala ng mga tanong ang mag-provide, Father God. At Ikaw ang mag-glorify, Ikaw ang mag-glorify, Ikaw ang mag-glorify. Pinapanalangin na namin ang iyong call, Father God, na wala kayo sa dito sa Manila. Ingatan mo siya ang yes. team, Father God. Ingatan mo sila, Father God. Ilayo sa kapahamakan at the Lord, may your guardian angels protect them. And Lord, lahat na kanilang aapakan ay kinikling na rin mayroon ng Lord Jesus Lord. And that's that ang anointing ng Holy Spirit mo ang gagalaw, Father God. Hindi siya ang nagpunod doon sa makikita, kundi ikaw, Father God. Amen. Ikaw ang makikita sa buong Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, Father God. And Lord, ikaw ang magpo-provide para ang mission, ang aming evangelism ay mapabilis, mapalaki, mapalawang, Father God. Maraming maraming salamat. Wala kami makitataas kung yung pangalan mo lamang at ang bawat naga kayo, JF, ay magsabi na, Amen. Amen. Sige po, tayo po magbigay. Again, for those who are listening to our live, you could give your tithes offering to Gcash, BPI, BDO, uh, and Luminier, Cebuana. So the information will be provided or are provided along with our caption or you could be in us. Diba? I-PM nyo din po kami kung kayo magbibigay ng iyong tithes na offering para alam po namin kung saan po namin ilalagay at idadala at i-release na. Amen? At uh, tayo po ay magbigay.
salamat po Panginoon sa araw. Magang ito, Panginoon. Muli ako, Diyos, patuloy po kami binigyan ng katagumpayan sa araw. Yes. Patuloy, Lord, na bigyan mo po kami ng revelation, Panginoon, sa araw-araw. Ugan na aming yes. malas lakaran, Panginoon, ang bawat salita mo, Panginoon, sa aming mga buhay. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mga kapatid ko na narito at nilaan ang kanilang mga oras upang purihin ka, samahin ka, Panginoon. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa nagpahayag na yung salita, Panginoon. Yes. Napatuloy, Lord, bigyan mo po siya ng kalakasan. Patuloy yes. na pagpapala, Panginoon, yes. sa kanilang pamilya, sa kanilang mga bungang kan, Panginoon, at ikaw po, Diyos, ang mag-provide ng pangailangan nila, Panginoon, yes. sa araw-araw. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa mga uh, bawat problema pagsubok na aming nararanasan at ikaw, Diyos, ang aming kalakasan. Yes. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa bawat isang narito, Panginoon, at binigyan 